Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Emily Severate and I'm the director of the Iowa 4-H Foundation. Today we'd like to recognize and celebrate volunteers and staff who have been selected by their counties for induction into the Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame. Normally we'd be gathered at the Iowa State Fair, but of course this year we know that isn't possible. So this afternoon, we'll do the next best thing and virtually share the inspiring stories of volunteers from across the state and to celebrate the impact that they've had on thousands of lives of young people. The Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame was established in 2002 as 4-H celebrated 100 years of being dedicated to teaching youth life skills. During those 100 years, it became evident that the essential elements of the 4-H program included caring adults who were committed to that program. The Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame recognizes those adult volunteers and staff who have demonstrated outstanding service and dedication to the Iowa 4-H program and its members. Here today to welcome you from Iowa State University is Dr. John Lawrence, Vice President for Extension and Outreach. Hello, I'm John Lawrence, Vice President of Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, and welcome to the Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame virtual celebration. Obviously, this isn't the Bruce L. Rastetter 4-H exhibit building on the Iowa State Fairgrounds where we be, would be having this event in a normal year. COVID-19 has created a new normal in 2020 for all of us. Many things have changed, but one thing has not changed. Throughout the pandemic, Iowa State Extension and Outreach has remained open for business. However, it has not been business as usual. Extension specialists and county staff have been conducting group education and activities virtually whenever possible and using video technology and conferencing successfully. One-on-one -on -one meetings have been conducted by phone, by video conference, and if meeting in person has been essential, it has been with appropriate distancing and precautions in place. We continue to develop and engage in alternative ways bringing research-based information and education to all Iowans. For example, our 4-H Youth Development Program has developed a wide variety of youth-led resources that are available for at-home learning. These resources are being continually updated and are available to the public. Our county extension offices were closed to the public for a while due to the COVID-19 precautions, but offices are reopening across the state according to local conditions and with safeguards in place. And this has been a county fair season like no other. Throughout this pandemic, the health and safety of Iowans has been our greatest concern. And that's why this year's 4-H Hall of Fame celebration is virtual. However, your contribution to Iowa 4-H program and to our 4-H members remains very real. Iowa 4-H would not be 4-H without volunteers. The top reasons people volunteer with Iowa 4-H are to support their own child, but to help others and to make a difference. Volunteers serve as the primary ambassadors for our 4-H program. They tell others of the importance of youth development, they recruit new youth and volunteers, and expand community partnerships. 4-H volunteers have a positive impact on their communities as well. They make communities stronger, connect communities with one another, and improve community health and increase overall civic involvement. Most of all, 4-H volunteers are mentors, role models, and shining examples to our young people. Your influence with 4-H youth goes far beyond club meetings and fair projects. You are developing Iowa's future leaders. The 4-H experiences are designed to, be, to strengthen a young person's sense of belonging, generosity, independence and mastery. We empower youth to reach their full potential through youth adult partnerships and research-based experiences. Through club work and all of our youth development programs, we invest in Iowa youth. You help our 4-H youth learn how to be healthy, how to be leaders, how to become engaged in their communities, and how to use science and technology wisely. We appreciate all that you do. We must do everything we can to help Iowa's young people become the next generation of effective communicators and leaders. And we must prepare them to be ready for whatever challenges the future may bring. 
Iowa State University Extension and Outreach believes in 4-H and in the land-grant mission. We're uniquely positioned to make sure our young people have the skills they need to be successful in their education, career, and life journey. With your support, time, and talent, we can help Iowa's young people become the leaders we know they can be. Congratulations to all of our honorees who are being inducted into the Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame. Iowa 4-H has more than 10,000 volunteers who make our youth development program possible. This year's Hall of Fame will recognize 119 people from 86 counties. And you're being recognized as the best among many. Thank you for everything you do for Iowa 4-H program and our Iowa 4-H youth. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence. This year, 86 counties nominated inductees into the Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame. The inductee was chosen by those counties represent both longtime volunteers and extension staff who have exemplified outstanding service and dedication to the 4-H program in their county. Today's inductees into the 4-H Hall of Fame represent the many people in Iowa who have contributed countless hours to 4-H. Their legacy can be seen in the young people as that they have mentored, who will in turn support the continuation of the 4-H program that builds Iowa's leaders. Assisting with today's presentation is Vicki Heiler, president of the Iowa 4-H Foundation Board of Trustees, and Abe Schmidt, a 4-H'er from Winnesha County and a member of the 2019-2020 State 4-H Council. The first statewide recipient, Joe Sellers. Joe Sellers spent 31 years with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach before retiring in 2018. He served as a beef specialist serving 17 counties in South Central Iowa. Growing up in Southern Iowa, Joe was a longtime 4-H member and even served on State 4-H Council. He went on to graduate from Iowa State University with a degree in animal science. He later received a master's degree in ag education. In his professional role, Joe spent his summer supporting youth programs. He spent countless hours working with 4-H and FFA youth at carcass shows. This was one way he could share his knowledge on production practices and management. He was also a 4-H sheep superintendent at the Iowa State Fair for more than 20 years, helping thousands of kids with their sheep projects. Upon retirement from Iowa State, Joe has filled his time by continuing to work on the family farm. Thank you, Joe, for years of service to Iowa 4-H. The second statewide recipient, Tom Boss. Tom Boss grew up on a pig farm in Kosuth County. He earned his bachelor's degree in animal science and later his master's and PhD, all from Iowa State University. He started out as a professional career in the pork industry. When Tom became an animal science professor at Iowa State University, this firsthand experience allowed him to make connections for students and translate real world experience in the pork industry. Tom spent more than 20 years serving a joint ISU appointment in research, teaching, and extension before retiring in 2016. Tom also served as a swine research extension specialist. Through this role, he connected with Iowa 4-H to support youth programming across the state. He served on the state 4-H swine committee, coordinated the swine species track of animal science roundup and served for several years as the Derby Swine Show Superintendent at the Iowa State Fair. His work with youth programming helped countless 4-H members learn more about producing quality pork. Thank you, Tom, for your commitment to Iowa 4-H. From Johnson County, Tim Smith. A visionary thinker, an excellent decision maker, a talented leader, and a mentor to hundreds of Johnson County and Iowa 4-H youth are all words to describe Tim Smith. Beginning as a 4-H club member in Jasper County, Tim grew up in a family who believed in the value of 4-H youth development and the importance of practicing leadership and citizenship skills. He exemplifies these skills. As a Johnson County 4-H parent, volunteer leader of the Hawkeye Helpers 4-H club, member of the Johnson County 4-H Youth Development Committee, and the Iowa 4-H Foundation, Tim provided volunteer time and resources to Johnson County 4-H and beyond. 
Through the Iowa 4-H Foundation, he initiated the Hills Bank Leadership Grant Program, providing leadership training and a college scholarship program, so far totaling $503,000 for Iowa youth. Thank you, Tim, for your dedication in striving to always make the best better. Congratulations. From Keokuk County, Eugene and Karen Greiner. Eugene and Karen Greiner have been very active in Keokuk County 4-H program for many years. Eugene has served on the Extension Council Board and had also volunteered as a beef superintendent, while Karen served on the Keokuk County Expo Fair Board and was also a 4-H and Clover Kids leader. She also served as the food stand manager. Their two daughters, Brianna and Kayla, were brought up as active members in the Keokuk County 4-H program, Iowa State Fair, and many junior shows. Eugene is currently a retired volunteer, and Karen is continuing to serve as the Keokuk County Clover Kids Superintendent, working with future 4-Hers, making the best better. Thank you, Eugene and Karen, for your dedication. From Kosuth County, Judy Brune. Judy comes from a long line of 4-H history, from her parents to herself to her three children. 4-H has been a huge part of her life. She has had great experiences and accomplishments throughout her 4-H leadership career, including leading one of the largest clubs in Kosuth County. She has been a 4-H leader for 28 years. She enjoys it very much and likes working with the youth. As their tradition continues, she also watches and or leads four out of her 11 grandkids as they start their journeys in 4-H. She continues to lead a club in Kosuth County, as well as being a fair judge at surrounding counties. Thank you, Judy, for your support for 4-H. From Lynn County, Allen and Marilyn Plattner. Allen and Marilyn Plattner have been longtime supporters of the Lynn County 4-H program. Marilyn has embodied the 4-H spirit for a long time and once gave a presentation at State Fair on how to put a zipper and collar on a blouse. She accidentally knocked the iron off the table but smoothly picked it up and kept going. She was a leader of the Indian Creek 4-H Club for many years and encouraged her members to always keep trying. Allen was a member of the Sheep Committee for many years and served on the Lynn County 4-H Youth Programs Committee. He also made sure to support extension staff, even attending fair board meetings to show his support. Thank you, Alan and Marilyn, for your continued support of 4-H. From Louisa County, Jean Bermel. As a member of the Jefferson Jennifers, Jean Bermel learned well the 4-H pledge, where she has lived a life of service to 4-H clubs, her community, her country, and her world. After completing her years as an active 4-H member, Jean became an adult volunteer in Louisa County. Jean has also volunteered with her local Ladies Golf Association for the American Cancer Society, chairing both the Relay for Life and Daffodil activities for many years, and became a founding member of the Louisa County 4-H Foundation. Jean also took to heart the pledge to give her health to better living as she golfs and runs regularly. Congratulations, Jean. From Lucas County, Kevin White. Kevin White has been a dedicated and active supporter of the Lucas County 4-H program for over 47 years. He joined the English Strivers 4-H group at the age of nine and has continued to serve the local 4-H program in various roles throughout the years. 4-H provided Kevin with many opportunities, including the 4-H Student Exchange, Washington, D.C. Citizenship Trip, and 4-H Livestock Judging Team. He so enjoyed his 4-H years, he wanted to give back to the program. He believes 4-H is a great way to teach youth the importance of agriculture while providing them the opportunity to learn various life skills through static and livestock projects. Kevin has also enjoyed being a 4-H parent and helped his daughter Brittany and son Ty with both their livestock and static projects every year. Thank you, Kevin, for your commitment to 4-H youth and the 4-H program. From Madison County, Darla Milholland. When Darla Milholland got married and moved to rural Madison County, Darla quickly found her niche in 4-H. She took on many volunteer roles, including club leader, 
4-H and Youth Committee member, 4-H Food Stand staff, State Volunteer Retreat Committee member and chairperson. These are just a few. Darla has helped with National 4-H Congress and State Council interviews. Darla and Paul raised six kids, all who were very involved in local and state 4-H. They typically raised beef cattle on the family farm, but the operation grew to include horses and hogs while the kids were 4-H members. This city girl got married and moved to a small community. Her 4-H experience began with supporting her kids in 4-H club activities, and then she became involved on many levels. Thank you, Darla. You have touched many generations. From Mahaska County, Chuck Bogard. Chuck Bogard and his wife Donna were owners of Layton Processed Meats for many years. In that time, Chuck hosted the annual 4-H Carcass Contest where 4-Hers and FFA exhibitors would bring cattle in to be processed and extension staff would work with the locker to evaluate the meat and provide an educational overview of the overall results of the contest. Many 4-H families enjoyed going into the locker to visit with Chuck and his staff, and he was always willing to provide information and answer questions with a smile on his face. In the early 2000s, Chuck retired and sold the locker. Throughout his children's years in 4-H, Chuck served as a 4-H club leader and provided numerous educational experiences for the young people in his club. Thank you, Chuck, for your continued support for 4-H. From Marshall County, Lisa Peterson. Lisa Peterson has been a staple in Marshall County 4-H for quite some time. In 2004, she took over for her father as the swine superintendent. Since then, she has become involved even more as a 4-H leader, fair board member, the Marshall County Pork Producers, the Marshall County Sheep and Goat Committee, as well as being a 4-H mom. Lisa is always willing to step up and do whatever is needed to help the youth in Marshall County. Lisa and her husband Pete live in Rhodes with their three daughters and can be seen showing almost every weekend during the summer. Thank you, Lisa. Congratulations. From Mills County, Janet Wade and the late Ken Wade. Janet Wade and the late Ken Wade dedicated many hours to volunteering with 4-H and Farm Bureau in Mills County. Janet was a 4-H club leader for 10 years, and during that time, she encouraged and was a role model to all to live by the 4-H pledge. The late Ken Wade was a quiet gentleman who worked diligently to find new ideas to challenge 4-Hers and incorporated them into activities and events, such as the Round Robin Showmanship event. Janet and Kevin Wade bought, brought their passion for volunteering, youth, and ag to Mills County and worked tirelessly to create a legacy for today and beyond. Congratulations and thank you both for your continued support of 4-H programs. From Mitchell County, Clarence and Elizabeth Uthie. Clarence and Elizabeth Uthie have been involved and have been life, lifelong supporters of the Mitchell County 4-H program. Elizabeth served for several years on the youth committee and was a leader for a girls club, even though she didn't have any daughters. She continued to help 4-H members complete record books and project work through the years. Clarence, a club leader for several years, was a groundbreaking leader in Mitchell County when he allowed a girl to join the all-boys club when her 4-H club disbanded due to a lack of numbers. This was the start of co-ed clubs in Mitchell County. Thank you for your commitment to 4-H, Clarence and Elizabeth. From Monona County, Judy Mulder. Judy Mulder loved the outdoors and children, but she hadn't even heard of 4-H. She was involved in Girl Scouts when younger and worked at Girl Scout camps. She became involved with 4-H in 2005, serving on the 4-H Youth Committee until 2018 when she became ill. She was a leader of the 4-H Clover Kids Club for five years and was awarded honorary 4-H member in 2015. Judy was a teacher working with preschool children with special needs for 30 years at the Maple Valley School in Mapleton. She was an advocate for animal rescue and adoption, member of the Mapleton Fisher Whiting Friends of, of the Library, on the Mapleton Rebuild and Recover Board, and very active in her church. Judy passed away in 2019, losing her battle with cancer, but had a great impact on many children, her community, church, and many organizations that she supported. Well-deserved. Congratulations, Judy. 
from Monroe County, Paul and Nikki Ammons. Paul and Nikki Ammons have been longtime supporters of the 4-H program. Paul and Nikki instilled a respect for 4-H and all it offers in their kids. And it was a natural decision for their children to get involved in 4-H. Nikki shared her skills for years through the 4-H Foundation, while Paul spent many hours at fair as a hog superintendent. Paul and Nikki have lived the 4-H creed over the years, offering head, heart, hands, and health to the local 4-H program. Thank you for your continued 4-H support. From Montgomery County, Larry and Sherry Heyer. Larry and Sherry participated in helping at many fair activities, being on the fair board and educating the community and its youth about dairy farming. Larry also served as dairy superintendent for many years. Having one of the main purebred Ayrshire dairy farms in Montgomery County, the Hires played a role in bringing the dairy life to town each summer for fair. With their love of animals and farming, Sherry and Larry built their lives on Salem Ridge Farm, raising two daughters, Michelle and Amy. Larry and Sherry always encouraged their daughters when it came to 4-H. Besides their own children and grandchildren's fair activities, both Larry and Sherry helped other youth with making sure they had projects of their own, from show cattle to bucket calves, hogs, sheep, picture taking, or just baking cookies or pies to make sure they got the true Montgomery County Fair experience. Congratulations, and thank you for your commitment to helping all 4-Hers. From Muscatine County, Becky Peterson. Becky Peterson has served Muscatine County 4-H as a youth, parent, volunteer, leader, and staff person. She was a 4-H member for 10 years as a youth, has volunteered as a leader for a combined 27 plus years, and retired as the Muscatine County 4-H County Youth Coordinator after nearly 23 years of service. Becky has made a tremendous impact on the lives of many Muscatine youth and her varied roles in this organization. We are so grateful for the time, energy, and expertise she has invested in Muscatine County 4-H. Thank you and congratulations. From Osceola County, Katie Rick. Katie has been a volunteer and extension staff member for the last seven years. Her dedication to the office and 4-H program is superb. Her positive attitude and helpful spirit is a necessity throughout the summer season of events. Katie is a special education teacher in Sioux Falls. She obtained her master's in special education in 2019 and has been nominated for the South Dakota Teacher of the Year. She is from Sibley, Iowa, and now lives in Sioux Falls with her husband, Derek, and dog, Daisy. Thank you for your commitment to inspire youth to grow. From Page County, Curtis and Brenda Meyer. Curtis and Brenda Meyer have been involved with the 4-H program for many years. Brenda was a 4-H member in Nebraska, while Curtis was a Page County 4-H member. Curtis and Brenda have been sponsors of various swine trophies and banners throughout the years. Curtis was the Page County Fair Board President in 1992 and the Swine Superintendent for several years. Brenda has served on the 4-H Page County Endowment Fund Committee. The Meyer children and grandchildren are involved with 4-H now and are, and are enjoying the many opportunities that the Page County 4-H program provides. Thank you, Curtis and Brenda, for many years of support. From Palo Alto County, Dr. Daniel Nessheim. Dr. Daniel Nessheim, DVM, known to most as DOC, played a significant role in the 4-H program in Palo Alto County in the 1980s. Doc Nessheim joined the Palo Alto County Fair Board in 1983 and served on the board until 1990, serving as vice chairman and chairman during his time on the board. During these seven years, along with other members of the board, the fair board made significant improvements to the fairgrounds, including repairs to the show pavilion, updating water lines, adding showers to an existing bathroom, building a new horse barn, constructing a track with fencing, and bringing new entertainment to the fair. Doc is a man who knows how to make positive change, and the Palo Alto County 4-H program has greatly benefited from his efforts. Congratulations. From Plymouth County, Linda Beitelsbacher. Linda has been an active 4-H volunteer in Plymouth County 
for the past 38 years. She first joined the Grant Little Giants 4-H Club in 1959. She was a member for 10 years and exhibited cattle. All three of her children were active in the Plymouth County 4-H program. Linda served on the 4-H and Youth Committee, has been a volunteer on 4-H Static Exhibit Judging Day, served as Static Building Superintendent, Clothing Event Committee, and the Fair Queen Contest, and currently serves on the Awards Committee and Fair Subcommittee. Linda has attended 4-H Static Judges training and led workshops, as well as reviewed scholarships to the Iowa 4-H Foundation and was a founding member of the Plymouth County 4-H Foundation, serving on that board for five years. She loves watching young members grow and mature to successful senior 4-Hers and beyond, and will always continue to strive to uphold the 4-H motto in her daily life. Thank you, Linda, and congratulations. From Pocahontas County, Donna C. Hewson. 4-H has been a part of Donna C. Hewson's entire life. Her mother was her 4-H leader, and she, in turn, was her children's leader. Donna loves that 4-H is a family affair. Highlights as a 4-H mom, including watching her children show sheep, being a chaperone on the Citizenship Washington Focus Trip, and attending the 4-H State Conference. As a 4-H leader for 23 years, Donna enjoyed re the rewarding experience of teaching her 4-Hers the life skills of community service, communication, good character, parliamentary at meetings, and record keeping. Donna continues to be a selfless community leader of Pocahontas County. Thank you, Donna, and congratulations. From Polk County, Marlis Von Stein. Marlis Von Stein has been a 4-H'er, 4-H parent, and a 4-H club leader and volunteer, and an employee of Iowa 4-H. She started her 4-H career as a 4-H'er in Buena Vista County, where she was active in clothing, food and nutrition, and home furnishing project areas. Marlis started as a volunteer for Polk County 4-H by being the founding leader of We Excel 4-H Club that her three boys would be members of. This club is still active in Polk County today. In 1996, Marlis was hired as the Polk County 4-H County Youth Coordinator, and she served in the position until her retirement in 2003. She was known in the community for assisting families and volunteers to have the best 4-H experience possible. Marlis continues to volunteer in several capacities, both for Polk County 4-H and Iowa 4-H. Her ability to organize volunteers and understanding of Iowa 4-H makes her successful in this position. She is also now a grandparent of Polk County 4-Hers. Congratulations, Marlis, and thank you for your support. From East Pottawatomie County, Carla Jonk. Carla Jonk was a lifelong supporter of 4-H. She was a nine-year member of the Monroe Mary Makers in Shelby County. Later, she became a 4-H leader in both boys and girls 4-H clubs. Carla served on numerous committees that supported 4-H. She was an active member of the County Youth Committee even after her children had graduated out of the 4-H program, allowing her to connect with current 4-Hers. Many 4-Hers have fond memories of Carla as she spent countless hours judging record books. 4-Hers would read her comments and take her constructive criticism to heart and learn from what she had to say. Congratulations, Carla. From West Pottawatomie County, John Fisher. John Fisher of Neola has been involved with 4-H for 57 years as a 4-H member, leader, and most recently, co-superintendent of the West Fair Livestock Sale Committee. He was an original member of the state 4-H Council in Iowa. John has continued to be active and support the West Pottawatomie 4-H program. He has served on the 4-H Youth Committee and as a poultry and rabbit superintendent. He and his wife, Mary, served in various club leadership roles and all four of their children were 4-H members. John is a member of the Livestock Sale Committee, helping with the banking side for 11 years and then becoming co-superintendent for 13 years. John is always an advocate of learning and was instrumental in getting the carcass program going for West Pottawatomie youth. He truly is an advocate of helping youth learn and making the best better. Thank you, John, for supporting 4-H. From Powashik County, Gina Erfer. 
Gina Erfer has been active in Powasheet County her entire life. She was born and raised in Malcolm, Iowa, and has farmed with her husband, Jim, since 1977. She has a son and daughter and five grandchildren. She has served as a 4-H club leader and volunteer with Clover Kids 4-H. Gina enjoys sharing her passion of the outdoors and agriculture with the youth in the area. She is always willing to help at a moment's notice. Congratulations, Gina. From Ringgold County, Dr. Keith Miller. Dr. Keith Miller is a true supporter of Ringgold County 4-H, giving his time in a variety of roles over the years. Fair board member and chairperson, 4-H sheep superintendent, fair vet. He believes in youth so much that he initially keeps a close eye on each one of them while they work with their 4-H projects, while they participate in school or community activities, and while they are at their jobs. He has been known to pick out individual youth or even groups of youth during the county fair and even throughout the year to recognize and thank them for standing out as positive youth in our community and having a strong work ethic. Thank you, Dr. Miller, for teaching and modeling community service. From Sac County, Anita Ham. In 1940, Anita Ham moved to the Nehama Farm community along with her family from Arlington, Nebraska, to what was established as Clover Honey Farm. Anita herself was a longtime member of the Delaware Rainbow Girls 4-H Club and a member of the Delaware Cadets Boys 4-H Club, so she could show Ayrshire cattle at the Sac County Fair. Married to her high school sweetheart, Kenny, and raising their children on their own farm, Anita went on to become a 4-H leader for the Delaware Rainbows, and her children were equally involved in both of the 4-H clubs, taking projects to the Sac County Fair and showing dairy cattle as well. Anita continues to this day to be an active community member, involving the Nehama 4-H Club with community service events and supporting all our club's community service and ongoing projects thus helping us learn from the past and grow into the future. Thank you, Anita, for many years of service to 4-H. From Scott County, Lisa Zelli. Lisa has spent many years working to help 4-H youth, beginning with her children's involvement in 4-H until today, where she serves as an advisor to the county council. She expects hard work and models it for the members. Community service, Projects and exhibits, record books, fundraising, all must be done to make the best better. Members working with Lisa learn that effort is key in 4-H and in life. Her work with youth has included helping at the Ronald McDonald House, chaperoning state 4-H conference, raising money, and providing activities at the county fun night, as well as helping the youth plan their work. A highlight for many is receiving a care package the first year they are out of 4-H a sign that members are still important to Lisa even after they graduate. Thank you, Lisa, for many years of service to 4-H. From Sioux County, Bill and Kathy Punt. Bill and Kathy Punt have been integral part of the Sioux County Youth Fair for over 20 years. This couple has been named more than once the mom and dad of the Sioux County Youth Fair. Kathy has spent hours behind the mic announcing livestock shows and non-livestock events, while Bill has been behind the gate greeting every 4-H'er and FFA member as they enter or leave the arena. Their joy and passion for the 4-H program is evident in their dedication at the club level all the way to the county fair. 4-H is much more than one week of the year for this family. Bill and Kathy believe in our youth, and they make sure each 4-H'er and FFA member knows it. They give encouragement to each and every exhibitor, volunteer, and extension staff they come into contact with, and it makes a difference. Thank you, Bill and Kathy, for your years of service to 4-H County and to 4-H in Sioux County. From Story County, Owen John Kelsum. Owen John Kelsum has been involved in the 4-H program his entire life. Whether he was a 4-H member and exhibitor, parent and 4-H leader, Story County Extension Council member, Story County Fair Board member, or just a lover of 4-H, he found himself involved at the local county and state level. Once John became a parent, he continued his involvement as a 4-H leader with his children, Jeff, Sharon, and Karen and Clint. 
he was dedicated to teaching them the importance of setting and carrying out goals for a variety of projects, as well as caring for, working with, and practicing showmanship with their animals. Each year, he helped organize the annual club tour for local 4-H members. Due to his good genes and strong Norwegian blood, John is 89 years young and remains an enthusiastic promoter of the 4-H program. Congratulations on a job well done, John. From Tama County, Jim and Jeannie Benkin. For Jim and Jeannie Benkin, there is much more to a county fair than just the six days that the animals and members are on the grounds. No one sees the amount of background work that Jim Benkin, Tama County Fair Swine Superintendent since 1979, until a few years ago, does to make sure the youth are educated in their swine project, make sure the scale is ready so that all swine are weighed, tagged, and ear notched prior to the fair, organizes the weigh-in process at the fair, and makes sure the show runs smoothly the day of the fair. And beside him all the way is his wife, Jeannie, who has been a part of the Tama County Fair Board recently, serving as treasurer. Thank you, Jim and Jeannie, for your dedication to 4-H'ers. From Taylor County, Roger and Betty Brummett. Roger and Betty have played a key role in maintaining and fostering the 4-H program in Taylor County. Their dedication to ensuring all 4-H's understand the core values of what 4-H stands for has always been at the forefront of their leadership role as a beef program specialist, 4-H leaders, and more importantly to their children and grandchildren. Their two sons were involved in 4-H and currently have grandchildren in 4-H carrying on the long family 4-H tradition. Roger dedicated 25 years to Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. Betty was a 4-H leader for the Bedford Downtowners 4-H Club for 20 years. Within those years, they did many community projects, such as building new barns at the fairgrounds and mentoring youth as they went through the 4-H program. Congratulations. From Union County, Walt Glynn. Walt Glynn has been supporting Union County 4-H youth with livestock projects since moving to Creston from Cass County in 1963. Walt helped found the county's Celebrity Beef Show to raise money for fairgrounds improvements and for more than 30 years has gathered donations from local businesses and bought livestock at the fair auction, making sure all 4-H'ers received comparable prices for their animals. Walt, along with his late wife, Carol, was a nine-year 4-H leader. He served on the Union County Extension Council, helped on the fair board, was a beef committee member for more than 25 years, and is a businessman, farmer, cattleman, father of four, and grandfather of nine, all of whom have been involved in 4-H. Thank you, Walt, for a job well done. From Van Buren County, Rick and Sandra Kaufman. Rick and Sandra Kaufman have been involved in 4-H since they were both nine years of age. The two served together while their children were members of 4-H. Sandra and her daughter Amanda are now the leaders of Blazing Trails 4-H Club. Sandra has also served on the Extension Council since 2013. 4-H is a big part of the Kaufman's life, raising four children and 14 grandchildren through the program. Rick and Sandra believe in the 4-H program because of the responsibilities it teaches, as well as helping people become respected young adults. They have experienced this themselves with their kids and grandkids. They both agree that watching young kids grow through 4-H is one of the greatest parts of their lives. Thank you, Rick and Sandra, for your commitment to 4-H youth. From Wapello County, Joyce Bear. Joyce has been involved with the development of 4-H youth for many years. She focuses her efforts on guiding the members of the club and teaching foundational skills. She recognizes that the most important thing about participation in 4-H is that the youth have the opportunity to follow their interests and to develop skills in leadership, communication, and citizenship. Joyce's dedication to 4-H doesn't end with her club. Over the years, Joyce has been an active volunteer with the, the Wapello County Expo. Joyce has also shared her wide variety of expertise in baking, fashion, gardening, bucket bottle calves, and more, as she has volunteered as a judge in surrounding counties. 
Above all, Joyce values the community that comes along with 4-H involvement. Her passion and drive to make the best better has had a significant impact on their children, 4-H members, and their families. Congratulations, and thank you, Joyce. From Warren County, Susan Motluck Sims. Susan Motluck Sims grew up on a farm in Warren County. When her own two children, Nathan and Megan, joined 4-H, she became a leader for her childhood club, the Jackson Hilltoppers. Even after her own kids graduated from 4-H, she continued being the lead club leader, which she continues to this day, 15 years later. She also serves on the local 4-H Youth Committee and the 4-H Foundation. Outside of 4-H, Susan has headed up the Martinsdale St. Mary's Schools activities concession stands for over 15 years. With her continued involvement in youth activities, Susan has maintained a unique relationship with the young people in Western Warren County, and they have benefited greatly from her guidance. Thank you, Susan, for years of service supporting Iowa 4-H. Congratulations. From Washington County, Dave Burney and Dwayne Sprouse. As staples to the Washington County Fair Sheep Project, Dave Burney and Dwayne Sprouse can typically be found in the sheep barn or in the extension office, mulling over show orders during fair week. Both have served as sheep project superintendents for 48 years. They've seen it all and continue to work tire tirelessly to improve the overall experience for youth. Dave is a Washington County alum. He grew up in an active 4-H family and carried on the tradition upon meeting his future wife, Linda, on a youth trip to Washington, D.C. Dwayne became involved with the 4-H program during his time as an ag instructor. With no prior experience of raising sheep himself, Sprouse suggested raising sheep to an FFA member, which in turn sparked his own interest in the species. His own kids started out their 4-H careers by raising sheep. Thank you, Dave and Dwayne for your commitment of service to Washington County 4-H. From Wayne County, Rich and Paige Mitness. Rich and Paige Mitness have been a part of Wayne County 4-H and the Wayne County Fair since coming to Southern Iowa and making it their home. They have resided on the family farm for many years now, raising their son and now enjoying the company of their grandchildren. Rick and Paige certainly have a love for their family, the land, and the livestock. The couple exemplifies what it is to be a good neighbor and servants to their community. Both are longtime supporters of the Wayne County Fair. Rick serves as the scale superintendent, and the couple sponsors six different awards for livestock and static exhibits. Rick and Paige now enjoy watching their grandchildren participate in 4-H and show livestock. Thank you, Rick and Paige, for your support to 4-Hers. From Webster County, Lonnie and Karen Anderson. Karen is a Webster County 4-H alumni and as an adult has helped with county interviews and record book judging. Lonnie too is a 4-H alumni and has dedicated endless hours to building the first tractor pulling track and race track at the fairgrounds. His goal has always been to maintain a place for the kids to be able to show their projects each year. He is always willing to help with any job needed to be done throughout the year at the fairgrounds. Both were members of the Webster County Fair Board and Karen was on the 4-H Youth Committee. The dedication that Lonnie and Karen have shown throughout their many years of involvement with the Webster County Fair Board and 4-H illustrates repeatedly how they care and support community organizations. Congratulations, Lonnie and Karen. From Winnebago County, Mary Walk. Mary began her journey with the Winnebago County Extension in 2002 when she joined the Winnebago County Extension Council. She served as a member and treasurer for 14 years. She became a master gardener in 2000 and is a resource for the county office when local calls come. Mary is always willing to jump in and volunteer her time at many county events. She has led many 4-H youth and adult programs, often with gardening or sewing. She volunteers her time at the extensions annual events such as Family Fall Festival and Family Fun Night, and she continues to help at the county fair. For many years, she has helped the, youth, the youth's horticulture projects, as well as the cat, dog, and pet show. Congratulations, Mary. 
From Winnetka County, Dick Horn. Dick Horn spent 33 years with Extension, beginning as the 4-H youth leader and later became the Extension director. Anyone attending the Winnetka County Fair knows that the Pee Wee Dairy Show is a highlight. For many of these children, this positive experience is the start of their 4-H career. Dick brings out the best of kids on the microphone during the show. Dick enjoys a good game of golf and reads anything about history. His family, including 17 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren, and health, are of main importance to him. He is known for his great sense of humor. Congratulations, and thank you for your commitment and support to 4-H. From Woodbury County, Kathy Goodwin. Kathy Goodwin has a long history with 4-H in Woodbury County, even serving as the first Woodbury County Fair Queen. Kathy worked at the Woodbury County Extension Office as the office assistant. After retiring from the Extension Office in 2010, she continues to volunteer yearly on 4-H Judging Day. Kathy was married to Bill for 40 years and has two children and six grandchildren. Kathy's husband died in 2008 following a five-year battle with ALS. Kathy loves spending time with her family and friends. Kathy has always been generous of her time to others and is always willing to help the 4-H program. She's active in her church and her community. Congratulations, Kathy. Thank you for continuing to support 4-H opportunities. From Worth County, Rhonda and Mark Taylor. Rhonda and Mark Taylor currently serve as the Worth County Fair 4-H food stand managers. Rhonda and Mark have put in many years of hard work and dedication in managing the food stand. Rhonda and Mark are very much appreciated and respected for their commitment to the Worth County 4-H program. They devote many hours of service and efforts to raise funds for the Worth County 4-H program. Their successful food stand management skills have given hundreds and hundreds of 4-Hers a tremendous amount of scholarships for educational youth opportunities that they may not have been able to afford otherwise. Thank you, Rhonda and Mark, for your years of support for 4-H. From Wright County, Bill and Marcy Broderson. Marcy comes from a long line of 4-H involvement Having been a member, having both a mother and a father who served as leaders of clubs, two sisters who have been leaders of the, of the club, and now Marcy as the leader of her daughter's Dayton Lake 4-H club. Bill and Marcy have also been running both the 4-H pop stand and the food stand at the Wright County Fair since 2007. Watching their own family members in 4-H is pure joy for Bill and Marcy. There have been nine grandkids involved with 4-H and one great grandchild with more to follow. Their family motto, once a 4-H'er, always a 4-H'er. Thank you and congratulations to Bill and Marcy. Thank you, Vicki and Abe. Now, please welcome Tim Smith, Hall of Fame inductee from Johnson County, who will now share some thoughts on behalf of all of the recipients. I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to represent this year's inductees into the 2020 Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame. Each of us as volunteers are really being recognized for, for different reasons. Some of us are, are being recognized uh, and feel an importance for volunteering uh, to give back to an organization that has meant so much to us. And it's really helped shape our lives. Uh, as we look back and think of the skills that we learned in 4-H, uh, it may have helped determine which school we go to. It may have provided us the opportunity to meet our spouse. And it may have helped uh, decide which career we were going to enter. So in many ways, uh, it's an opportunity for us to give back to an organization that has, has meant so much to us personally. For others, uh, it was a family tradition. Uh, in our family, it was something that we just carried on and, uh, and it carries on through the generations. It was mentored by our parents and, and it was an important part of our volunteerism life and, and we carried on to the next generation. In other cases, we're being, recognizing for, we're being recognized for volunteering to support our, our children. 4-H uh, is an organization that we believe in. Uh, we believe in the, uh, the values proposition. We believe in the character development of 4-H and it aligns with our own. And it's a great opportunity for us to, to work with our children in, in different activities and, and to teach them in, in uh, the values that, that we believe in and support. And so it's a great opportunity to work with our children. And for others, uh, it's, it's an opportunity to, to support our community. Uh, many of us, after our children have, have finished 4-H, 
uh, continue to support the 4-H program and be involved in it because uh, we know and understand the value uh, of having a strong community and want to uh, be a part of that and see, uh, see, see the community grow uh, and be strong. But really, when we, when we decided to volunteer, we didn't do it necessarily for the recognition. Uh, but it is, uh, it is nice to know that there are our friends that, that do uh, support it, that do acknowledge it and, and uh, appreciate the, the work and effort that has gone into the, to, to volunteering. I'd also like to reach out and thank uh, our employers. Uh, in many cases, our employers have uh, been very uh, generous with uh, allowing us to volunteer for many different organizations and, and especially the 4-H uh, the 4-H program. Uh, they've allowed us to go ahead and, and put in many hours and uh, um, know and understand the importance of volunteerism to our communities. And so I want to thank our employers for that. This year, I also wanted to take a, a minute to thank uh, uh, you know, those that have worked especially hard in these COVID times to work and develop uh, ideas and, and think creatively on how we could go ahead and support the program in a different way, uh, given the times that we were experiencing. And I think it would have been easy for us to, to just go ahead and set uh, this year's activities uh, you know, on the shelf. But I think rather than do that, the volunteers you know dug in uh, deep and thought creatively about how we could create safe activities that uh, would be beneficial to our members and i think uh, they've done a good job of that. i think all of us would like to go ahead and look back and think of the way things were and think it's going to continue that way but i think uh, again this year is a glimpse of changes that we are going to go through and i think if we acknowledge those changes and embrace those changes uh, we can take the positives out of that and to make our organization even stronger as we move forward. So again, I'd like to say thank you for uh, those that have uh, nominated us. Nominated us. Uh, I'd like to thank the 4-H organization and uh, we very much look forward to many more years of service uh, to a great organization that we support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. In closing this afternoon, please welcome Dr. Debbie Nistler, 4-H Youth Program Development Leader. I'm Debbie Nistler, Iowa 4-H Program Leader. Last year, I stood at the stage at the State Fair for the annual Hall of Fame ceremony during my first week on the job. This year, our 4-H Hall of Fame looks a little different than past years, but our inductees demonstrate that our Iowa 4-H program continues to be strong and impactful in every corner of our state. As I look at the bios of our inductees this year, it is amazing to me the impact they've had on youth in their communities and ultimately across the state. Conservatively, Hall of Fame inductees combined dedicated more than 2,500 years to the local 4-H programs. If they only assisted 10 youth a year, and we know they reached many more than that, that would be 25,000 youth impacted by these Hall of Fame inductees. If each of these youth follow the 4-H motto to make the best better, what a difference this group of volunteers has had. If we could only reach every youth through 4-H, the problems we face today may not exist. As a lifelong 4-H'er, I understand the influence a 4-H volunteer has on the future success of youth. Each of these volunteers have shared stories about their love of the program and their passion for youth to succeed. I remember very well my patient 4-H club leader helping me with my record book, hauling my animal to fair, and not being too mad when he sat on my tack box and walked away with a freshly painted imprint of a 4-H clover on his new jeans. I am who I am today because he cared. Our 4-H Hall of Fame inductees today spark that passion to engage in others, convincing neighbors and friends the merits of 4-H and bringing them in as volunteers themselves. They also modeled community service and engaging their communities. That talk the talk and walk the walk mentality ingrains the priority of service in our youth to the benefit of our local communities. Who better to sell the 4-H program to our stakeholders than that amazing volunteer? No one can bend the ear of a public official or donor better than that adult who has dedicated their life to the service of others. Iowa 4-H is healthy and thriving. It is reaching youth in every corner in every community in Iowa. It is doing so because of all of you. Our youth thrive because you care. 
because you advocate for them. You cheer them on. You sit with them patiently as they rewrite a record book page or bake a pie for fair. Thank you seems an inadequate thing to say today, but it comes from the heart. The heart of every 4-H mom, dad, and member. We are here because you stood beside us. Today, we stand beside you as you are recognized for a lifetime of service to others. We are blessed to have you in our 4-H family. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, for your leadership. Despite the circumstances of the past several months, Iowa 4-Hers have risen to the challenge, so showcasing integrity, adaptation, and resiliency. No doubt the outstanding volunteers and staff recognized today, in addition to others across the state, played a significant role in the development of those young people. The skills that young people gain through the 4-H program will serve them well into the future. These caring adults made that possible. So on behalf of the Iowa 4-H youth and alumni, allow me to thank all of you who have recognized the importance of the 4-H program and have dedicated your lives to making the best better. Now please join the 2019-2020 State 4-H Council as they recite the 4-H Pledge. I pledge my head to clear thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living. For my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you for helping us to recognize the 2020 Iowa 4-H Hall of Fame recipients. To read their bios, as well as those from past recipients, please visit the Iowa 4-H Foundation's website, which is linked below. Take care.